Enjoy them while you can, guys, because I'm probably going to need to move them in a minute. Because today's video, I want to discuss focal length. Now, this is one of the very first things that we get taught when we're learning photography. The concept of all lenses have a focal length, and that focal length is measured in millimeters. And that a short focal length gives you a wide angle of view, and a long focal length gives you a narrower angle of view. But I always wondered, what do those millimeters actually mean? So about two years ago, I went and I did some research on it and then subsequently made a video explaining it called The Science of Focal Length. However, following that video, I had a few people commenting, querying some aspects of it that made me go back and do some further research on it. And the more that I've researched it, the more I've come to the conclusion that lenses don't actually have a focal length at all. I know that sounds like some clickbait level conspiracy theory, but bear with me and hear me out on this. Unfortunately, this is the part where you need to leave. Come on. Don't worry, you can come back up at the end. Now, for just in case there's anyone who's watching this who either hasn't seen my previous video or isn't aware of the concept of how you measure focal length, I'm going to quickly recap that first. For anyone who has seen the previous video or is already aware of the concept of uh, measuring the point of convergence to camera sensor, then skip ahead to this point in the video now. Now, for those of you still watching at this point, we know a lens is a, a tube full of glass elements or glass optics. And the job of these optics is to manipulate the light that enters the front of them in order to project as, as good an image out the back as possible. And that image then lands on a medium to record it, usually a digital sensor or film. But if you hold the lens up to your eye, you will usually notice that everything you see through the lens is inverted. It's upside down and it's back to front. Now, the reason for that is because the optics within the lens are generally manipulating the light so much that it actually causes the light to cross over itself and inverts the image. So all the light that is entering the scene at the top of the lens ends up exiting at the bottom. Everything that enters the left side of the lens exits on the right. So the image that is actually landing on the camera sensor right now actually looks something like this. Fortunately, the camera is aware of this, that everything it's seeing is inverted, so when it's processing this video, it's flipping it all back around the right way up. It works on the same principle as our eye. Our eyes actually invert everything that we see, but our brain knows this and corrects this, so everything appears to be back the right way up. Now, where the light in the lens crosses over is known as the point of convergence because it's the point where all of the light is converging. Now, the general notion of what a lens's focal length is is a measurement from the point of convergence to the camera's sensor. The notion being that the image that's being projected to the sensor is always going to remain the same size. So if you move the point of convergence closer to the sensor, then the light has to travel at a more aggressive angle to be able to reach the sensor in the right place at the right time. But if you move the point of convergence away from the sensor, then the light has to travel at a shallower angle and thus you get a narrower angle of view. And now that theory of measuring point of convergence to camera sensor works in a lot of scenarios. But when you then start looking at certain lenses, you start to see there's some flaws in that. And this is where we get onto the first question that I was asked a few times on my previous video, which is, if that is how you measure focal length, then how come my lens has a focal length that's longer than the lens itself? And a very valid question that is too. So right here I have the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter DSLR lens. Now this is retracted to 150 millimeters and it is 26 centimeters, 260 mil from the front of the lens element through to the lens mount. Now, bearing in mind that on a DSLR, the sensor is sitting 44 millimeters behind the lens mount, which would actually put the distance from the front of the lens to the camera sensor as being around 300 millimeters away, 30 centimeters. 
which on the model of point of convergence to camera sensor would put the point of convergence somewhere around about here in the middle of the lens. And that kind of makes sense. However, if I then zoom the lens out to 600 millimeters, the sensor hasn't moved, so it's still in the same place, but the point of convergence would now be 600 millimeters away from the sensor, which would put it around about here. And obviously the point of convergence can't physically happen before it's even entered the lens. But it's not just telephoto lenses that it doesn't fit the model for. If we consider wide angle lenses, now that is an 11 millimeter DSLR lens. But we know that a DSLR's flange distance, the, the lens has to be at least 44 millimeters from the sensor. And the gap between the lens mount and the sensor is thin air. So nothing can manipulate the image that's being projected from the lens to the camera sensor. Now the lens mount diameter is slightly larger than the camera sensor, but not by much. So the point of convergence can't be much further than halfway from the lens mount to the camera sensor, which means in theory, the widest possible focal length that we should actually see from a DSLR lens would probably be about 16 millimeters, not an 11 millimeter. To do an 11 millimeter focal length, the optics projecting the image from the back of the lens would have to be substantially larger than the sensor in order to be able to get that correct angle. Except the back optic of this lens is tiny. It's smaller than a camera sensor. So it's not possible for this lens to project an image that has a point of convergence 11 millimeters from the sensor and yet still lands and fully covers the sensor. It doesn't work. And yet we know this lens has a point of convergence because if you hold it up in front of your face, you can see the image is inverted. So somewhere within this lens, there is a point of convergence happening but it can't actually be 11 millimeters from the sensor. So the model of point of convergence to camera sensor isn't physically possible, at least in some cases. And yet, with a bit of trigonometry, you can see it works. That didn't make any sense either, did it? Let me explain. The light lines traveling from the point of convergence to the camera sensor are traveling at an angle away from each other. That angle is mirrored on the opposite side before the point of convergence, and that is, in theory, our viewing angle. And we can use trigonometry to work out what these angles are. So if we take, for example, an 11 millimeter focal length, the point of convergence being 11 millimeters away from the sensor and the sensor being 36 millimeters across, using some basic trigonometry, or in my case, cheating and using an online triangle calculator, you can work out that the light lines traveling from the point of convergence to the camera sensor are 21 millimeters each, which gives a respective angle between the two of them of 117.995 degrees. I haven't got the horizontal angle view of the Irix, but I do know that the horizontal angle view of the Canon 11 to 24 millimeter at 11 millimeters is 117.1 degrees. So it's projecting the right angle of view, but we know that's not physically possible because it's a DSLR lens, the point of convergence shouldn't be able to be there. Same with a 600 millimeter. 600 millimeter focal point gives a respective angle of view of around about 3.43 degrees. Now that isn't quite a 600 millimeter anyway, but the Canon 600 millimeter has a projected angle of view of 3.3 degrees. So again, actually slightly narrower than what a 600 millimeter lens should be. But again, that lens is only about 45 centimeters long. So the point of convergence would be happening before the light even enters the lens. Well, what the hell is going on here? Well, this kind of ties into the second question that a couple of people asked me, which is, are you sure that is how you measure focal length, the distance from the point of convergence to the camera sensor because I've read somewhere that you measure focal length from the center of the front optic to the point of convergence. That's how you measure the focal length of a single optic. So if you have a very curve optic, it's obviously going to kind of aggressively redirect the light and give you a short focal length. 
Whereas if you have a much flatter optic, it's going to give you a longer focal length, which is generally why you see wider angle lenses have curved front glass, whereas longer lenses have flatter glass. So for example, with the 600 millimeter lens, if this was just one glass element that was going to project the point of convergence 600 millimeters away from it, then the lens would have to be at least 600 millimeters long just to the point of convergence and then a little bit more to get to the camera sensor. Or if this 11 millimeter lens was a single glass element lens, then it would need to be such an aggressive piece of glass that it would have to angle all the light to land only 11 millimeters inside the lens. But the problem with that, such an aggressive change of angle of view would cause chromatic aberrations and distortions like you would not believe. Which is why no camera lens is a single piece of glass. They have more and more pieces of glass to help try and correct for all those distortions to get as clean an image projected onto the sensor as possible. Now maybe you could argue that the focal length of a lens is referring to the focal length of that front optic, the one that's initially getting the light into the lens, and that is referring to the field of view that we see. But even that doesn't stand true. For example, here we have the Tokina 20mm f2 E-mount lens and the Sony 85mm f1.8 E-mount lens. Two very different focal lengths, and yet yeah, the front glass elements of both of these look near enough the same. In fact, the 85 actually appears slightly more rounded than the Tokina. Or if we consider zoom lenses, so the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter. At 28 millimeters, very wide angle of view. At 75 millimeters, a narrower angle of view, but the angle of the front optic never changes. So the reason why you see different angles of view with a zoom lens is because when you zoom the lens, all of the glass optics are changing in relation to each other, which is manipulating how the light is then traveling through the lens. So what the hell does a lens's focal length actually measure? The best that I can see is that it doesn't measure anything. It can't be measuring the distance from the point of convergence to the camera sensor, because in the cases of both of these lenses, the points of convergence are well off what their advertised focal lengths are. It can't be measuring the point of convergence away from the front optic, because if you then put it into the context of a zoom lens, the front optic moves and the point of convergence moves, but the angle shouldn't be changing. And again, we would then still have with this lens, the point of convergence would be so far out the back of the lens that it would be essentially behind the camera as well. The only aspect of my research that seems to hold true to what you actually see in a lens is the basic trigonometry that if you draw a triangle over a camera sensor and you put the point of convergence, the stated focal distance away from the sensor, the angle of view that it produces corresponds to the angle of view that the lens produces, which this holds true to the original setup that we had of measuring point of convergence to camera sensor as a basic model. But that's all it is, it's a basic model off a pinhole camera. It's not how real lenses obviously work because it's not physically possible. So it actually seems like modern camera lenses nowadays, the stated focal length is nothing more than the hypothetical focal length that would be required to give you the angle of view that the lens is actually producing. It's essentially a representation of the lens's angle of view rather than an actual measurement of the lens's focal length. Now, right about now, you might be thinking, well, hang on, if that is not an 11 millimeter lens, then why advertise it as an 11 millimeter lens? Why not change all lenses to be their angle of view that they actually produce rather than suggesting that it's something that it's not? I can only assume it's a twofold problem. Firstly, would be the sheer amount of confusion caused by having to say, I've bought the new Irix 117.995 degrees lens. Secondly, is that if you take away the millimeters measurement of focal length, you throw things like your aperture measurements all out of whack as well, because your F numbers of your aperture are determined as a ratio of the lens's focal length to the diameter of the aperture opening. So if you remove the focal length measurement, you'd have to do a ratio of the angle of view to the diameter, and then all our F numbers would all go crazy. 
And in reality, it doesn't make any difference anyway. It doesn't matter whether they advertise a lens in millimeters or degrees, it still does exactly the same job. The, the reason why they state millimeters seems to be more just a way of making it easy for us as photographers and videographers to understand. But it doesn't really change the way we shoot. It's just something that people ask me about and this is the only answer I could come up with. So there we have it. But enough about focal length. I promised you'd get him back. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for this video, guys. So now feel free to go and get some aspirin or codeine or a pint of vodka or whatever form of medication you prefer to take to get rid of the headache that I have probably just caused you, which I apologize about. Uh, but as always, if you have any questions or queries, the comment box is down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it helpful, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to help support this channel, you can also check out my Patreon account as well. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video. But even you've got a headache after that, haven't you?